there in New England once, and what I found from those is that you know you see a whale about 300 yards off. So that needs to do it. Oh, I saw a whale! I saw a whale. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. So we got into these boats <clears throat> down in uh, a lagoon in south uh, southern Baja. Um, what are the name of the boats? Panga? Pingas. Yeah, they hold about 12 people, um, and they take you out there. And the lagoon was the Ojo de Libra, which we found out there was the Eye of the Jackrabbit. <laughs> oh, okay. There are various explanations on why it was called the Eye of the Jackrabbit. It didn't make sense, except for it looked like it was in the shape of it. But they took us out there, and as we were getting out there about maybe a half an hour going, and the lagoon is not a little lagoon, it's like five miles wide and 40 miles long. So it's a huge lagoon. Um, so we go out there, and of course, you see a spout. 300 yards away, and we all get excited. That was really cool. And uh, then it goes farther, and all of a sudden you get about 100 yards out, and you see it. It's like a silhouette of a whale out there. And it's just huge. Uh, Pacific gray whales, um, full grown, are about 50 feet long, and they weigh 88,000 pounds. So they're huge. Um, and what happens is they spend their summers up in Alaska, and the weirdest thing, one of the largest mammals on Earth swims down from the Arctic waters in probably October, 6,000 miles, all the way down to Baja, California, to do one of two things, either give birth to the calves that didn't carry them all year, or to mate in anticipation of having the calves the next year around. So they do that over a period of oh, December, February, January, February, March, and then the calves are born and the mothers teach the cat. The mothers teach the cat how to swim. And in March they turn around and they head six thousand miles back up to Alaska to feed during the summer. So it was quite moving. It was like uh, being kids on a field trip. Um, I tried to take some and um, try to look at the whale. Remember, the whale was a was a four-legged land mammal. Kind of like a wolf. Millions of years ago. And it actually mm -hmm. migrated back into the ocean and developed the flippers and the flute, the tail that it has today. So there's probably some um, connectivity that we have with that mammal. So you go out there and the babies are born and of course they're air breeders. They have to go to the surface to breathe. So the number one job of the mother is to, as soon as the baby is born, to get them up to the surface to get his first breath of air. And then of course they spend the next Wanders of teaching them how to swim, how to breathe. Um, but we gave them a lot of human quality as we were out in the boat and it got closer to the boat. It was almost like the mother was showing off her child. Mm -hmm. She'd get underneath the baby and she'd lift the baby out of the water. Wow. And this 2200 pound baby <laughs> <laughs> was looking at you. And they have, they have eyes on the side of their head here. So if they turn sideways, and once in a while you get this glimpse and you look right into the eye and see the whale. That baby's looking at me too. So it's, it's like, mm -hmm. Needless to say, on the way home, um, in the bus, going back, um, usually what happens is when I'm moved by something like that, a song pops into my mind, and so I wrote a poem. And as I was uh, picking up my guitar yesterday, I played a couple of chords, and the next thing I knew, the, the poem became a song. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I remember the melody. <laughs> Give it a try. And I asked my wife, which we call it, because we know what to call it. So right now it's called my whale song. It's very original. Yeah, it works. About the Come and let me look in your eyes. Yes.
Yes, I know that yours are never dry. Still, I wonder if you cry like I feel when we say goodbye. Farewell, my friend. You must soon travel.